Hi, my name is Atikur Rahman and I am a Redbus certified DevOps engineer. Today I'm going to show you how you can install Revit MQ and connect to that Revit MQ and put messages and consume messages, right? So let's get started. So Revit MQ, it's a uh, messaging service, it's a message broker. You can put messages over there. It's a queue service and then you, with a consumer, you can consume those messages. So you can, it can help you to decouple your application, right? So in AWS, you can uh, install RabbitMQ into a EC2 instances, and then we can <clears throat> use our script to connect to that RabbitMQ, put messages, and then consume messages. So first, let's install the RabbitMQ. So create a new instance by clicking the launch button. I'm going to give it a name. So RabbitMQ. And then uh, Amazon Linux 2023. I'm going to choose an instance. I'm going to use a key pair. I already created previously, and I'm going to use an existing security group. In the advance, you can keep everything as it is. In the IAM instance profile, choose, uh, choose a role that has permission to systems manager so that I can connect via the console. So click on the launch button. This will launch the instance and it will take a minute to get started. Meanwhile, the install is being uh, ready. Let's go to the RabbitMQ docs and then go to install. And here is a very simple script that you can run. We can use Docker here to install and run RabbitMQ into a DC2 instance. So let's get uh, AC2 here, click on the connect button, refresh, let's click on the connect. So here, let's go to the root, so do AC2, become root privilege. We need to install Docker first. So you can run DNF, install Docker, And that will install the Docker latest version, right? So it will install, it's installing Docker 25. Once this is being installed, we are going to start the Docker and then we are going to run this command to start running the RapidMQ container. Okay, let's clear the screen and then run system CTL start Docker. This will start the Docker. And we can also run system CTL enable Docker. So it means if you restart the server, Docker will automatically start. You don't have to run the Docker start command again for this server. So let's clear the screen for better clarity. Okay, let's make this a bit bigger, slightly bigger so that you can view the comments. Okay, good. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to run this command and can copy this, paste it here. Only change I'm going to do is I'm going to run this as a background process, right? So, we do D that will be running as a daemon. It says unable to find image because it's true. I don't have that image locally. So it will first pull the image from the Docker Hub and then it will start the container, right? So let's clear the screen again and let's review Docker PS. Yeah, here you can see it's running uh, the Docker container, everything Q4. Okay, it's running fine. We need to have the uh, instance IP address. I'm going to copy that and go to use it. So in the security, the security group that we used, so ensure that the port 5672 and 15672, those two are open because Docker actually, sorry, uh, RabbitMQ actually runs on those two ports. We can verify this by copy the IP address Paste it here and put colon and then put 15672. You will get an interface like this where you can log into the interface. 
the default username and password is guest and guest. So using that username and password, you can log in there. Once you log in, then you can actually uh, create your known users with permissions. Then you can create channels, all those things. So now we are going to log in as a guest. GUST and then GUST. Log in. Okay, that's good. I'm not going to save that because this is not the purpose. Okay, this is our RabbitMQ server up and running, right? This is the connections, channels, everything we can do in the admin panel. We can create new users, all those things we can do. Now I'm going to test with two scripts uh, with Node.js to first push the message to the RabbitMQ server, another one will consume it. So let's open our VS code. And then uh, I already have that script created. It's very simple. Um, you can just go to the RabbitMQ with Node.js. We are going to first uh, requiring this uh, MQP lib. And then we're going to use .env to host the RabbitMQ host is on a password and queue name. So that's why we're using .env. So it's very simple. We are going to first uh, create a connection, create a channel, and then we are going to put a message, right? So the message will be like, hello, I think, hello, I think. for your subscription, okay. Okay, so this is the message I'm going to push, right? So let's try. Before that, let's uh, go to the .md and update the post time user and password, etc. So let's go to is it instance, copy the IP address, and then replace here. And the username is guest and guest, but if you have a different, just change it. And we need to put five, six, seven, two. This is the port number, right? So that's that's the point. And the key name I can put article, but you can use something different. It's up to you. Let's try to run it. Uh, first, we're going to like run with it in install. And then we are going to run this thing. I already installed, but for you, it's, you can just run this too. It will install those two NPM packages and then uh, clear the screen and run node uh, mq.js. So uh, it will put a message. This is the message and it will be here. And uh, with the queue, then there's a queue and there's one message is ready, okay? So we put the messages, message is still available, but no one has received it or consumed it. Now let's create a consumer. So uh, this is the consumer. It's similar. It is uh, reading a .mp file, getting the host name, this is the key name, and then it is consuming. If there is any messages, it will consume and receive. So let's try to open it and then run this script node uh, readmq.js and it is uh, saying that message is received. Hello, Adiku, thanks for your subscription, right? So let's try to, uh, this This is, is running. Let's try to change this part and put a new message. Hello, Adiku, mm -hmm. We like your channel. We more videos for us, right? Okay, so I move this. I'm going to create a new, uh, or shell and then run it here out mp.js. Now it's pushing this message. And if I go to the other one, as you can see, it received the message. Hello, the Guraman would like channel create more videos for us. So, and if we come here, you will see that there is no message is ready. So this is basically using reality in queue where you can push messages into the queue and then the consumers, if there is multiple consumers, they will consume and process the data. Here, the message is very funny, but in your real applications, it can be like you wanted to do some actions. Let's say you, you wanted to send emails, 5,000 emails, so maybe 1 million emails. So rather than like looping all those email and processing, that's not good. You can push those email addresses as a queue. And then as a consumer, you can have multiple consumers, maybe 100 consumers, they are consuming. 
and then they are processing those emails. So you don't have to like wait 1000 milliseconds, 1000 seconds, process 1 million, process 1 million emails. Rather, you can have 100 consumers, they will consume like one email each one per second, then the like you can do that only with 100,000 seconds. But if you have more consumers, 1000, maybe 10,000, then they can do it very fast, like um, 100 seconds. So that's the beauty of queue management system that you can uh, like uh, distribute or decouple your uh, application to multiple parts. And then if you have a lot of amount of data needs to be processed or some needs to be taxed, some tax needs to be completed, then you can actually push something in the queue and other uh, consumers will consume it based on their availability. So you are not uh, kind of like uh, having any issues with uh, server uh, processing power or etc. You can consume on your own speed. So that's about Revit MQ. It's it's a small, uh, tiny application, but it can be very helpful when you are building up microservices or maybe distributed systems. This is really helpful. It will help you to get started uh, on the microservices and distributed systems. So that's about Revit MQ installing on AWS. I hope you like this video. If so, please like and subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. Thank you. Bye bye.